Hey everyone, Ryan Parrish here, and welcome back for the first sports roundup of 2018. I hope you all enjoyed the holidays. With the winter break over, teams are once again back on their grind, so let's get you caught up on what's happened so far in the past week. The Teton men's basketball team has played three games since last Thursday, all of them narrow defeats. On Thursday, they were defeated by Central Wyoming 90-81. to They followed that up on Friday with a four-point loss to Miles City, and then the Tetons opened up conference play on Monday against Dawson. They took a lead into halftime, but were unfortunately able to hold on, and they fell 68-60. to The Tetons women's team played their first game of 2018 last Friday against Miles City, a 90-54 defeat. Guard Shaley Sheridan suffered a knee sprain in the game. Coach Herbel said she will be day-to-day -day and will hopefully be well enough to return sooner rather than later. With an already short bench, Sheridan's absence meant the Tetons had to go into Monday's game against Dawson with only two subs. The team lost 79-60, but showed signs of improvement. Guard Macy Kirkaldi responded to being thrust in the starting lineup by relentlessly attacking the basket, leading the team with 22 points on 7-11 from the field and 7-8 from the charity stripe. In high school basketball, the Coyotes were in Bismarck last weekend. The boys were defeated 76-47 by Century on Friday, and then 72-38 by Legacy on Saturday. The girls didn't fare much better, losing to Century 79-24 and Legacy 49-41. The boys team was able to bounce back on Tuesday night when they hosted Watford City. The Wilson shooters caught fire and never slowed down with six different Coyotes making a three-point shot during the 90-52 blowout. Senior Will Brown once again led the Coyotes in scoring, turning in 23 points for the contest. The girls team was on the road out on Tuesday, this time at Coster County, but they did not have the same good fortune that the boys team did. They were defeated 43-32. It's been a tough stretch for the Coyotes, who have lost eight straight since they started the season 2-0. They'll look to get back on track this weekend. In hockey, it was another string of tough defeats for Wilson teams. The Tetons were swept in a two-game series against Jamestown University last weekend, losing 8-3 in the first game and 10-1 in the second. The Coyotes boys were defeated 5-1 by Minot on Saturday and then 3-2 by Botno on Tuesday. Meanwhile, the Coyotes girls were shut out by the Fargo North and Fargo South Shan and Shanley Collective on Friday, and they were beat 5-1 by West Fargo on Saturday and 5-2 by Minot on Tuesday. For our interview this week, I talked to Joanna Baltes, a coach of the Wilson Sea Lions swim team. This weekend, 10 members of the Sea Lions will be traveling to Elkhorn, Nebraska to compete in the Midwest All-Star Championships with Team North Dakota. It's Team North Dakota's first time participating in the event. All right, roll the interview, roll the... All right, so I guess just to get started, tell us a little bit about this event. I know it's the first year you guys have gone to it. What is it and why is it such a big deal? Okay. So yeah, North Dakota was invited um, in early December this year to the Midwest All-Star Meet. It's a meet that takes place in January every year and it involves um, about five different states. So each state sends their top swimmers and this year we were invited. So we have 62 kids from the whole state and we're really excited that the Sea Lions are contributing 10 swimmers to that. Um, and of those 10 swimmers, we have a couple kids that are state champions. So we have a really strong team and it'll be great for our swimmers to get some exposure to swimmers outside the state. All right, who are the 10 swimmers we're sending? So we're sending um, Colden Kringen, um, Gavin Baltus, Trevor Baltus, Savannah Gehring, Ethan Babcock, Marissa Branham, Sean Branham, Drew Zander, David Luthi, and Noah Begley. All right, so how did this kind of all come together for you guys as going to this event? Sure. So we were invite. We knew we were going to get an invitation to the event a couple of months ago, but we didn't know how we would do our selection process because we have to take the kids that have the top ten times. Um, so we were sent a list in December. We looked over the list, and then each team around the state um, sent in their nominations for kids that had the fastest times for each event. Um, and there's quite a few events that are offered, and then the age group is also only to age 14. So unfortunately, some of our other swimmers that are really competitive were too old to go to this meet. Um, but that was the process, and then we went, you know, who could actually go to the meet, and then from there we tried to um, get the biggest team that we could from North Dakota. All right, so what's this trip going to look like for you guys? What's the travel going to be like? It's a two-day event, correct? So what kind of are you anticipating this is going to be like for the kids? 
So it's going to be pretty. It's going to be a pretty crazy event because we have to travel to Omaha. Most kids are driving. A couple kids are flying, but most people are leaving on Thursday from North Dakota. We'll get to Fargo Thursday night, make it on Friday. We have a team warm up in the pool on Friday afternoon, so our kids will get used to the pool. We'll do a team picture, um, and then we're actually going bowling and doing pizza on Friday night, which will be fun for the whole um, North Dakota team. But this is a really big meet. I mean, this is gonna be hundreds of kids, and these are the fastest kids from many states, not just North Dakota. So it's gonna be quite a heady experience, I think, for these kids. A lot of these kids are used to coming in first and second all the time, and now they're gonna have some serious competition from outside North Dakota. So it's gonna be really fun. We, we, they know that they're going to be racing against some really tough kids, but they're really motivated and usually when you're racing against fast kids, you get faster yourself. Have you had a chance to kind of talk to them about them? What's their kind of like, what's their mindset right now? Are they excited? Where are they at right now? They're really excited. This is um, a first for our team and for the whole state. So when they were all selected, they were jumping up and down. They were so excited. Um, they've been training really hard, which, which has been a little bit of a challenge because we've had Christmas break and we didn't have practice for a couple of days. But even some of the kids that were on vacation went and found a pool. and. Um, so they've been practicing really hard. We did a whole butterfly day yesterday, which was a little insane for, for some of the kids that are not going to the meet. But um, yeah, they're, they're just excited. They want to give it their all. And um, they're just super proud to be representing Team North Dakota. All right. And then finally, uh, kind of just to cover what's going on with the rest of the Sea Lions. I know there's another big race coming up pretty soon for those kids that aren't going to Nebraska. What else do you guys have coming up? Yeah, we have a really big meet in Bismarck this weekend. It's called a Category 5 meet, so it's a split. We have the 12 and unders racing um, in one part of the day and then the 13 and overs. Um, so that we're sending a ton of kids. I think we have over 20 for the Sea Lions that are gonna be swimming there this weekend. That's a three-day meet. And then we have our big home meet coming up on February 3rd, and we'll have probably five or six teams coming from all over the state to participate in that meet. And then we've got our state championships in March, and we have a lot of kids that have qualified so far. So we're having a fantastic season. We are sending a ton of kids to these meets. Um, we're, we're consistently coming in first or second in a lot of these meets. So it's just a fantastic year for the Sea Lions. All right, and I want to give you one chance for a little bit of plugging. I know there's one home meet that's coming up, right? When is that? Yeah, the home meet is February 3rd, and that will be a one-day invitational. We'll have a bunch of teams coming in from around the state. And then we're also having a March 3rd last chance. We're actually calling it our last splash meet. So for kids that have not yet qualified for state, that'll be their opportunity in a really fast pool here in Williston to have one more chance to qualify. All right. Well, thank you. A lot of exciting things coming up. Thank you. Good luck, Sea Lions. Finally, as always, we end by letting you know what's coming up this week in sports. In high school basketball, Wilson Trinity Christian School hosts North Shore on Friday night. Girls tip off at 545, with the boys at 715. WHS hosts Jamestown Saturday. The boys start at 215 and the girls at 4. It's another busy weekend in hockey. The Tetons will be in Colorado this weekend for a tournament, starting Friday in Boulder against the University of Cincinnati. The team will then travel to Denver on Saturday to take on the Metropolitan State University of Denver. Meanwhile, the Coyotes will have a pair of home games on Saturday, with the girls' team kicking off the day's games at 2 p.m. with a matchup against Dickinson. The boys will follow after at 4.30 with a game against Century. Wrestling returns and will host Legacy on Friday night. The startup of that match has been moved up for an hour and is now scheduled for 6 p.m. And finally, the Coyotes Swim and Dive team heads to Jamestown this weekend. They will have duels on Friday and a tournament on Saturday. Well, this has been another edition of the Williston Sports Roundup. Stay safe on those icy roads, everyone, and I'll see you next week.